In today's video, I want to show you my new experiment. This is a DIY heat exchanger that's designed for blackouts or any emergency situation where you don't have energy. This thing will give you unlimited heat. It will go for days depending on the fuel you use. It has tons of options, ways you can adapt it, and it's very easy to build. So let me show you what it consists of. This is a two foot piece of four inch pipe that I got from Home Depot in the HVAC section. And it's made of aluminum. It has two elbows. You don't need both. This elbow isn't needed, but I put it here just for basically to show you the vent and how much heat comes out, which you'll see as the demonstration goes on. And I have, actually I bought two of these pipes. One of them I cut it down to eight inches for the chimney. Now I also have four of these little critters. I got these in the lumber section uh, at Home Depot for I guess building uh, fences and those kind of things. It's uh, very flexible. They're about I'd say an inch and a half wide. That's what I use for these here. Basically what I did is I, I bent it so it would fit on the brick as you can see right there and go over the pipe and on the other side. So I have two of them together and I bent them so they go around the pipe and hold onto the brick. Isn't that pretty neat? So what does that look like? Let me go ahead and lift it up and actually show you. See that how that went? So it makes it really sturdy. So rather than screwing in legs that are going to be wobbly and I have to adjust them, this way here, what's perfect about it, is if I want to lift it, like with this here, because I have the denatured alcohol, there'll be big flames. You can lift it higher, put another brick and another brick, go as high as you need to. Or if I'm going to be using the little tea lights, I could take a brick out, put it right down, so it brings the pipe closer to the flame. So it's very adjustable going up and down. So how I put it together is I made these clamps and once I had it on and it was all straightened out, I just put one screw through the clamp and into the stove pipe so it wouldn't flop around. Then I put on the elbow. These elbows are pretty sturdy once they go on. And I also put a screw on this side going all the way through to help it stay stable. So that is the basic unit. Stove pipe, elbow, stove pipe, elbow going the other way. Now, here's some of the alterations I made. I wanted to use this with a fan. And I have my beautiful little heat powered fan. And if you'd like to get one of these for yourself, I have the link to pretty much everything you'll need in the description below. So I wanted to have this and put this on here. Why? Because as the pipe heats up from the flames, I want to get that air going around the room. Yeah, if I just had this pipe like that, the air is going to be sucked in and come out the other end. But there's really not much movement and it didn't have the chimney effect. That's why I added this, this piece here. You want to have it at least 8 to 10 inches for the chimney effect. And you're familiar with the chimney, it sucks the air right up and out. And I put it at an angle to make it a lot easier so it's gravity fed. Would it be gravity fed? So it's heat fed. <laughs> heat rises, okay? So it helps us suck it through. So what I did was I wanted to have the fan over here. And I also wanted to have the fan assist the air going through. But I don't want to blow it this way because it will never have time to heat up. So what I did was I made a brace to put on here for my fan and I made two slits over here and kind of just took my little screwdriver and bent them out a little. And the reason for that is so the air would also go in here from the fan and help push the air out and it worked beautifully. So how did I build that? I went and got one of these things. They go on top of a four by four post, okay, for fences and stuff. So somebody would connect a post to a beam or they use them in houses and stuff. But there's also another piece that was here. Yes, you're right. It went like this. And I cut this piece off. Why? Because without it, the fan blades would have gotten away. So by cutting that out, it holds the fan in place and the fan blades are not touch. I'm not touching the metal. So once I made this, I fit it where I wanted to have it, which was right over there. And I screwed holes. You can see there's already holes there. I screwed a hole through into the pipe using my little step drill. 
And once I screwed the hole into the pipe, on both sides, I just did one screw on each one, and I used these little sheet metal screws to hold it in place. So now, this will fit right up there, and when it heats up, it's going to go ahead and blow it right in there. Now, I put the fan not in the middle, I put it a little further back, and I put it between two of the heat sources. I don't want to have one heat source directly below it, so I put it between two, just to make sure the fan's safe. And I wanted to have it so it would actually have... You know, at least two-thirds of the pipe in front of it so it has more air to blow. I didn't want to put it way out here because it won't get hot enough to be able to stop turning. And you can see right here it's safe. I didn't screw it right in yet. Okay, so I'm balancing it. So right here, it's between these two and it'll blow the air right up. Let's see, what else is there to tell you about it? It was so simple to build that could go on, but there's really not much more to say about it. You can put, like I said, whatever option of fuel you want down the bottom. I have a baking tray. This baking tray is a Coleman one. It has handles. Uh, I just had that kicking around. I think you'd be better off getting one of those silver uh, or larger cookie trays that are flat all the way around because they give you another, between both sides, another inch or two. And that's the difference between being able to have four cans or five. Even with sterno, you'll be able to have five, so it'll give you a little bit more heat. But the whole idea of these DIY projects is use what you have okay i had extra stove pipe over there had extra of these i have tons of tuna cans and i actually had that coleman tray and it's the first time i ever used it so let me go ahead and show you how this baby works it's so exciting i'm burning incense on this side so you can see the smoke going in and coming out so that's the cool air going in and the warm air coming out and it is cool air today it's actually about Let's see if I can put it on the wall here. We're looking at, ah, it's 50 degrees. It's been a nice day. So we have 50 degrees and the air coming out is 69. So it's actually getting pretty warm. The pipe itself is about 350, 300. So the pipe is pretty warm. The top of it even is 87, 88. Now this heat exchanger gives you a lot of possibilities. First of all, I've designed it so this tray down here can be pulled right out and you can change the fuels as often as you like. Right now I'm using Perlite with denatured alcohol. And just because that's one of my favorite heat sources, it burns very clean. And this can be used to heat up a greenhouse, a garage like here, or any kind of emergency shutdown. Now, how long will it go? Well, depending on the fuel source. Right here, I have perlite, and this here is enough heat to be able to move the fan. The beauty of the fan is moving the heat from the top of the pipe through the room. But if you notice, I have two slits over here that are open, so it's actually moving some air in there helping to move the air through the pipe along and like I said again just look at those rivers I put them there so you can see and those aren't in front of the hole those are on the sides because as soon as the hot air comes out it expands and I wanted to show you that how it comes outward now other fuels you can use is if you want you can use this sterno matter of fact you can find these at the dollar store and you can put probably four of those underneath and another thing you could use is these cool little things they're called voltives and they'll burn for I think about probably three two two and a half three hours and one of my all-time favorites of course is the tea lights people say well will those tea lights really get hot a video I just did yesterday I'll put the link here I actually cooked, uh, we actually baked the bread with tea lights. It actually took about three quarters of an hour. So that was an awesome thing. Another fuel, if you want to get really creative, or another system, would be, here's a couple things that I've built in the past. If you look at some of my past videos, you'll see this one here is a copper coil, and this one here is the copper torch, as I call it, powered by the same denatured alcohol. Now, you can see these are tall. But that's another adjustment I've made in this unit is right now 
I have two bricks. See that? I don't want to move it too much, but I have two bricks on there. This is designed, these braces are designed to stay on the bricks. So I could put three bricks, four bricks, bring it as high as you want. Now you can see the actual, the denatured alcohol, well you can hardly see it because there's no flames because it's burning so clean. I didn't put much fuel in there and uh, it's pretty much, I think two of them have burnt out already. So these are going to burn a little quicker, but if you want something that burns for a long time, you want heat for a long, long time, <laughs> the Crisco candles. I showed how to make these in another one of my videos. I'll try to link that as well. And these candles, you could raise it up, maybe another brick, put them underneath. And what it is, it's Crisco with several candles inside. This one was one I built just for light. But if you put them in a line, you can actually fit one, two, three of these. So that would be like nine candles underneath thing. Now, depending on the size of your crystals and how many candles you put in here, I've been told that these things last up to two months. Two months. Think of that. That's what a lot of people have found if you look at some of the Crisco candles online. Some of them go quicker. Mine goes quicker because I have three. But running it around the clock, it goes quite a ways. So like anything, this, you want to have it monitored. I say round the clock. You want to have, you know, be watching it, especially with a fuel like this. The candles will be much safe. And that's the nice thing about the Crisco, is the Crisco is big, it's stable, there's very little chances of getting knocked over. Look at that, the flames are very low, and you still see the smoke coming out. So it's still moving through, it's still, actually it's nice and warm. This room has gotten pretty warm too. So... Again, you have an option in fuels. You have the option of height. If you don't want to use, or if you don't have one of these heat-powered fans, I like to have the fan because I want air to move around. So let's put that back over there. Matter of fact, you can see just by me stopping how it kind of slowed down the airflow. So in my opinion, that does help quite a bit to move the warm air around and to give it an added assist. Oh, one more thing, as with many of my systems, people always ask, how do you put this out afterwards? That's the beauty of the tray. You just slide the tray out. Well, let me do it on your side so you can see it. Slide the tray out, and all you do is cover them. One, two. I always have big cans around. You can use the same can if you don't have this many cans. There we go. And... That suffocates the fire and puts it out so you're completely safe. Now I just got to deal with the incense. <laughs> so there we go. The perfect heat exchanger that requires no electricity. Everything is automated that can burn and keep you warm in an emergency shutdown for a long, long time. This is just so cool. And you want to be careful. The pipe is pretty hot. In fact, it's so hot that the fuels have completely gone out because this is just an experiment. They've completely gone out and you can see it's still, the heat is still coming out from the pipe. I'm quite pleased with how it came out. <laughs> so if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you built anything like this or are building one, let me know how it's working out for you. I'd love to hear your comments. And as always, I really would appreciate if you enjoyed this, that you subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and share this with your friends. I'm looking forward to creating many more experience and bringing you lots more off-grid heating and green type things, especially with summer coming up. we got a lot of green things with growing systems, but we need your support. So, like I said, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye now. <laughs> this is so cool.